China is working on the biggest water diversion project globally, essentially trying to beat nature at its own game. They're constructing tons of artificial canals, aqueducts, and tunnels that go through real mountains to bring fresh water to their dry industrial cities in the north. Let's dive into the details of China's South to North Water Diversion Project in this video. We'll talk about the cost, why they're doing it, how it impacts the environment, and whether it'll really help the Chinese people or not. Throughout history, China's geography has been both a good thing and a bit challenging. The Yangtze and Yellow Rivers, flowing from west to east, have made the eastern part of China a home for people for thousands of years. This land is great for living because of its fertile floodplains, allowing a growing Chinese population to thrive. Also, China's Yellow River Valley is like a massive super important area for farming worldwide. It's huge and it's always being used for farming. But if you go to the north or way out west in China, it's either dry or full of mountains. The Taklamakan or Gobi Deserts up north or the tough tall mountains of the Himalayas and Tibetan Plateau these places are not good for farming, and not many people live there. So the northwest part of China has a lot of land, but not many people can live there, and you can't grow much food there either. Now, think of drawing a line on a map of China. This line splits the country into two parts. Furthermore, 94% of the people in China live to the east of this line. Imagine the capital city, Beijing, and the cities in the north around it have been like the heart of China for a really long time. People, farming, and business have always been buzzing there. Cities like Beijing in the north have been using groundwater to support their people for a long time. However, due to the growing need for water in urban and industrial areas, this limited water source got used up too much. Another problem is that the Gobi Desert nearby in China's Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region keeps getting bigger causing more dust and sandstorms. This makes the situation even tougher for getting enough water. Every year, an area as big as 3,600 square kilometers, that's about twice the size of Luxembourg, turns into desert because of a process called desertification. Humans, through activities like cutting down trees, messing with the climate, and using up water from underground sources, are mostly to blame for this. Way back in the early 1950s, it was clear that northern China wouldn't have enough water for its people. As cities in the north continued to expand, the water supply kept decreasing. China faced the challenge of supporting millions of people in an historically dry region. To address the growing water scarcity in northern China, Mao Zedong, the founder of the People's Republic of China, came up with a solution in 1952. His idea was to transfer water from the southern part of the country to the dry northern regions, aiming to alleviate the emerging water shortage and provide a sustainable solution for the people in those areas. He once said that in the south, we have a lot of water, but in the north, there isn't much. If we can, it would be good to borrow a bit. Fast forward 50 years to 2002. Mao's idea got the green light from the state council after lots of careful planning. They named it the South North Water Transfer Project. It's a big plan to build aqueducts, tunnels, reservoirs, and dams connecting the areas. The goal is to move water from the south where there's plenty to the north where there's not enough. The project has three big canal systems, the eastern, central, and western routes. Let's start with the eastern route, which kicks off near Yangtze City by a big branch of the Yangtze River. There's this huge old pumping station doing the heavy lifting pumping water from the Yangtze onto the Jinghang Grand Canal, the longest human-made waterway ever. Then the water goes through an underground tunnel to reach the Yellow River. In the end, a bunch of water channels moved the water to the coastal city of Tianjin, which is next to the capital, Beijing, in the northwest. The whole length of the Eastern Route Project is really long, more than 1,100 kilometers. They started building this route in 2002 hoping to bring fresh water by 2013. But because the construction got delayed many times, it took more than four extra years. By 2017, the fresh water finally got to Tianjin, bringing about 1 billion cubic meters of water each year. This water is a big help for around 10 million people in the city. The central route of the mega project 
faced greater challenges compared to the eastern route, as it lacked existing infrastructure for water diversion. Starting at the Danjiangku Reservoir, the central route needed substantial construction, including elevating the dam by 15 meters. This elevation was crucial to enable the water to flow downstream towards the north. By raising the dam, the water level in the reservoir increased, eliminating the need for pumping stations to facilitate the smooth passage of water through canals and aqueducts. This complex engineering effort was essential for the successful implementation of the central route. Due to modifications made to the dam, over 300,000 residents in Habai and Henan provinces were required to move elsewhere to make room for the canals and expanded reservoir. The central route, consisting of artificial canals and aqueducts, serves as a complex network of both elevated and subterranean water passages across the Chinese central plan. A noteworthy feature within the central route is the Shehe Aqueduct, which extends above the Shehe River for a distance exceeding 12 kilometers. This transformative project significantly impacted the lives of the affected population, necessitating their relocation to accommodate the extensive water infrastructure. The central route is like a big waterway that goes all the way to Beijing, the capital of China. It was built in 2014 and is more than 1,200 kilometers long. After it was done, about one-third of the water from the Han River started going through this route. This caused issues for many people who depended on the Han River for clean water. So in July of 2022, the Chinese government said they're making a huge tunnel underground to bring the needed water. Furthermore, there's a tunnel that's going to be built under the ground about one kilometer deep. It will connect the Three Gorges Dam to the Han River and all the way up to Beijing. When it's done, this tunnel will be the longest and deepest man-made waterway ever. By the year of 2030, they expected to move a lot of water, around 12 cubic kilometers every year, which is like a third of the Three Gorges Reservoir. The western route, part of China's south-north water transfer project, is still in the planning stage and is the most challenging to build among the three routes. The western route, set to finish around 2050, aims to supply 17 cubic kilometers of fresh water annually to the northern Chinese provinces benefiting almost 100 million people. While there were talks about diverting water from rivers like Brahmaputra, it's not an official plan. India expressed concerns about China's potential impact on Brahmaputra. On the other hand, the South North Water Transfer Project, despite being incomplete, already benefits 140 million Chinese citizens. But opinions vary among local and provincial governments. Some, like Sichuan and Hubei, oppose redirecting the Yangtze, fearing it affects water security. Meanwhile, Gangsu and Qinghai believe the western route brings needed stability. However, environmentalists are worried about the project's impact on the natural rivers. As we wrap up, we want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this ambitious project? Do you think it's the right solution to China's water challenges? Or are there better alternatives? Drop your opinions in the comments below and let's get a conversation flowing. If you enjoyed learning about mega infrastructure projects and want more insightful content, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell. Stay tuned for more engaging videos, and until next time, take care.